Welcome to my film scanning mess. Uh, please excuse the, the messy workspace. I am not a YouTuber. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, I wanted to share my method for scanning film. I see a lot of videos on YouTube demonstrating it, and I see a lot of things that um, you know look really good, and I also see some things that... Uh, could use some improvement. Uh, um, you know, I, I learned how to scan film from YouTube, um, so I have to give credit where credit is due. But I've learned some tips and tricks along the way from my own experience uh, after having been doing it a few years that I think might help some others. Uh, so let me start with the pieces of my setup. Uh, I do have here a... Um, negative supply. Uh, I'll have the parts listed uh, below the video because I don't remember the name offhand of all of the pieces. But uh, this is the negative supply um, 120 uh, film advance um, and uh, the film carrier and the, what is this called? Um, can't remember offhand, but uh, it's pretty useful because of the next thing I'll show you, which I have adapted myself, which is a big part of this. I pr 3D printed this little ring, which fits on top of the negative supply, mm, whatever you want to call that. And I also 3D printed uh, a top piece which fits onto a, uh, um, a size step-up ring. So, see I can turn it here. So this allows me to bring the camera down, get my hand out of the way here, bring my camera down using the copy stand and it rests on the film advancer, whatever you call that. This allows me to reduce camera shake so that I can get the uh, shutter speed way down um, and have the ISO way down uh, and still get plenty of light to, to scan my film. So with this setup, I typically shoot around uh, 1 20th of a second. I shoot F uh, which is slow, but there's no vibration because I also use an electronic shutter uh, cable release. And I this is a Nikon Z7, um, and I have it set in uh, electronic shutter mode. Virtually zero vibration. Actually, I think there's there would be zero vibration. Um, so this works really great. So 1 20th of a second I find is more than adequate. Uh, anyway, back to the parts. So I'm using a Nikon Z7 with a 50 millimeter uh, Nikon Z lens. This is not a macro lens, but I have it stopped down to f8 and it works really great um, as a macro lens by using this 11 millimeter um, uh, extension tube. So uh, less than f8, there's some, a little bit of uh, distortion on the edges of uh, the lens, but f8, it is absolutely flawless from corner to corner uh, and it also helps to deal with any imperfections in the film flatness so this gives me a nice wide um, depth of field um, of area that's in focus so that way I don't risk uh, any uh, any of my film being out of focus so uh, the parts, like I said, negative supply, negative supply, my own 3D printed adapter. I can share the, the uh, print files. It's really not a big deal. I'm using a copy stand. I, I forget who makes this. I got it on Amazon. Uh, it works really nice. Um, and that's the parts. Now, I, I actually, I 3D printed my own little uh, pieces here as well. Um, and here's my... Uh, the, the film that we're going to scan today. Notice how it curls. I welcome the curling. I do. I know people want their film flat, but I welcome the curling. Um, 
because it sits nicely on my little, I just feed it in, I advance, it comes through, clickety, 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 it's really fast. Um, I have a really big complaint about the negative supply system though, I'll show you now. So I'm gonna take off this thing. Now, when I take, whoop, when I take this guy apart, this is the, what is it? Um, this is the not full border uh, film carrier. I have the full border one somewhere and it was terrible. I hated it. It was really slow. It was hard to feed the film through. Uh, I just didn't like it. Uh, it did give me the full border, but they, they included this crappy acrylic uh, anti-Newton ring uh, glass. It's not glass, it was, it was acrylic. And after like a dozen rolls of film, it was already getting these little, little rub marks with lines that was causing light uh, diffraction and, and dark spots on my negatives. It was just junk. So I went to uh, Night Optical uh, and I bought real anti-Newton green glass. They were selling a six by nine sheet for like 50 bucks. It was, and I got it and it was, I had to grind off the edge just a little to get it to fit, but it was great. Still, feeding the film through the negative supplies full border film carrier is always a nightmare. It just didn't want to go. So I took the regular one and I got a file. Wait, I got a file. Like this kind of file. And do this at your own risk, but for me it worked really great. I filed down on both sides until, of course, nice and flat. Um, and then of course you have to clean out the gutter here where the film, the, the ruts where the, the film travels through. Um, but once I did that, I now get not quite full border because obviously the film has to travel on something. Uh, but I get enough of the border that I'm happy. Um, and it now works really great and it feeds really great. So negative supply, if you're listening, um, please sell one of these because it was not fun filing it, but still I recommend to anyone doing it. So this clicks inside, nice and flat. I lower this guy down. The only thing that's important is to keep it alive. Oh, of course I have to have my adapter ring. And then once it's on there and nice and seated, you can see the frame here. When I load this in, this is how I just, I leave it like this. I just feed it in from the left. You see the, the film coming in over here. I also have the, um, the electronic viewfinder or the, the, the camera screen uh, here. So if I want, I can just tap to autofocus and usually that nails it. Um, yes, and then if I want, I can turn it around, shift it a little to get it centered. And then, yeah, so autofocus to be sure, blur, Focus. Oh, and I forgot to turn on my recording a video for YouTube will make you a little frazzled when you're not used to doing it. Okay, so now, ready? So I have it set on, uh, oh, here, and I like to do this. I use Capture One for tethering. I really like Capture One in general, but it's exceptionally good for uh, working with film, uh, color or black and white. I know there is no um, Negative Lab Pro for 
uh, capture one, but once you know how to invert and adjust your film color or black and white, it's super easy. You don't need negative lab pro. Um, all right. So maybe I'll make a video about that another time. All right. So anyway, I click boom. And now the next, so that was frame one. Once it catches there, see now it stops, right? So I got to, now I got to advance it. There we go. So I advance it to frame two and then I got to autofocus again, just in case. All right. Capture. And now from here on out, it's super easy. Next one and boom. Next one. Boom. Obviously I'm going to wait a few seconds, uh, after touching the advance knob because you know, I don't want any camera shake. Like I said, I do have this at a 20th of a second. 20th of a second F8 ISO 64. So I'm getting the absolute maximum, um, dynamic range I can get out of this film, which is really good. That's my daughter. <laughs> there we go. You see how fast this goes once once you once you kind of have it set up right. Yep. So the main takeaway that I want to share with everyone is reducing camera shake will greatly improve your film scans when using a digital SLR. I see people using copy stands like I am. I see people using tripods. Um, I see people using these devices that attach to the front of their, uh, their, their lens. And, and that one actually seems not too bad because at least the film is going to move with, uh, with the, the camera. So camera shake will be reduced, but you still have this long thing hanging in front of your camera and it's going to, it's going to wiggle. The takeaway here is the camera isn't hanging by some long arm and jiggling around because of all this, you know, length of arm, even the slightest vibration, right? The, the camera is being, its weight is being supported by the table. The arm, the copy, the copy stand arm is just to raise and lower. Uh, I've seen other devices online that you can buy where there are these, these rings and you could just set your camera on top of the, 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 the scanning light. But you know, that, that's, that's pretty much the idea here. Um, though I like to be able to raise and lower it and this is a, you know, permanent setup for me. But anyway, I just wanted to share because I think for those of you doing this film scanning, you would benefit from some kind of um, cable release. I'm using a Bluetooth one. Um, having the camera's weight supported by the table um, to reduce camera shake, a level, of course. Uh, oh, by the way, the this also guarantees that the camera is level with uh, the film or the, well, the piece of film. The film plane is level with the film. <laughs> uh, so all these things go to increase film quality. Uh, plus, you know, I, I see people trying to fight camera shake and so they're jacking up their shutter speed and then jacking up the ISO. I've done tests and uh, scanning these film negatives at ISO 64, at least for the Z7, which is, you know, a, a good camera in terms of dynamic range and noise, but using the Z7, 
comparing scanning these film negatives at ISO six ISO sorry I'm supposed to say ISO at ISO sixty four versus ISO two hundred or four hundred, I, which I see some people using, the difference is enormous. Um, you know when you're trying to pull some you know uh, highlights or shadows in your you know in your film. Uh, you're going to be amplifying the noise from the camera on top of the noise from your film. Uh, I realize, you know, this is art and we shouldn't care about this level of detail, but I I don't go for, like, perfection. But I do want my uh, digital copy to be as close to the film copy as I can. Uh, And this setup really helps me to do that. So anyway, thought I would share. Uh, this works really well for me. Uh, if, if any of you benefited from this, then it was worth my time and effort. Uh, and please give me a thumbs up. Not that I'm a YouTuber or trying to get the algorithm to promote my channel or anything, but just so that I know I helped someone. Uh, all right. Thank you.